Creating a component schematic symbol is performed in the schematic library editor within Altium Designer. The first step is to create the library itself as shown. Next, save the library with the name My Library. Display panels at the bottom of the workspace show what models are associated with the schematic symbol, as well as a preview of the selected model. These models can include PCB footprints, simulation, and more. For now, let's hide this subpanel to maximize the editing workspace. The SCH or Schematic Library panel automatically opens on the left. This panel can be displayed by using the Panels menu in the lower right corner of the Altium Designer window. Currently, there is only the single default component named Component Underscore One, which was created at the time we created the new library. Also note that the Properties panel is docked to the right. This panel allows users to edit component properties. We will now create an LM324 component. Let's start by changing the name of the component in the first line of the Properties panel. Next, edit the Designator field to the letter U with a question mark following it. The question mark is a placeholder for reference designators that will be added when the symbol is placed and annotated in the schematic. Now, we'll update the comment and description of the component. You can also select a component type if it is not standard. A full description of component types can be found in the Altium Designer documentation. If you look at the component datasheet, you'll notice that the LM324 actually has four operational amplifiers in the single package. This brings up a choice. Do we create one large 14-pin symbol or create a separate symbol for each op-amp? In this video, we'll create the four separate parts and combine these into one logical component. This will allow for cleaner and more readable schematic designs and will also facilitate printed circuit board layout and routing by enabling package swapping. To create the first part, you'll need to place and arrange the pins of the symbol. To add the output, use the place pin command from the pull down menu or use the P, P, hotkey combination. You can also access the command from the active bar panel. Next, change the properties of the output by pressing the tab key in the workspace to pause placement. This turns the focus to the output name field in the properties panel. The first property to change is the designator or pin number for the output. This pin number is the same pin number that will be mapped to the corresponding pad on the physical footprint. The name of the first output pin will be OUT, but it does not appear in the part symbol in the datasheet, so we'll disable its visibility by clicking on the visibility button in the panel. Its electrical type is OUTPUT. This electrical type property is used with the connection matrix to perform automated design rule checking to assure proper connectivity within schematic designs. The description field in the properties panel will be left blank for now. Additionally, you can include the pin package length and propagation delay of the pins. This information will be forwarded to the PCB design and combined with trace links to facilitate precise high-speed length tuning. I'll talk later about using the part number field, but for now, let's just leave it as is. We'll also use the default graphical pin length. Other parameters below are available to tailor the graphical appearance of the pin. This is useful for providing additional information about the intended use of the pin. This completes the pin setup. Press the escape key to exit the pause mode. Each pin has an end that connects electrically. This is the point where the wire connects to the part in the schematic. Since we're using a 100 mil schematic grid, it's best to see to it that the pin connection point is also on that same grid. This will ensure easy and clean schematic wiring. To change the grid step, use the G key to cycle through the grid settings. In order to assure that the electrical connection ends of the pins are located outward from the part, use the space bar during placement to rotate the pin. In this example, the first pin's connection point is put on the grid point 0, 0. The pin placement tool remains active and other pins can be placed as desired. As new pins are added, the pin number in the designator field automatically is incremented to the next value. 
use the space bar to rotate as required. Press the tab key during pin placement to edit the properties. And finally, using the line drawing tool, we create the triangle symbol graphics, as well as the graphics for the inverting and non-inverting inputs. Use the space bar during line placement to change the line placement mode as desired. The first part of the component is now complete.